Praise the Lord. This is the true worshiper. First and foremost, I give God the glory and the praise. I am not looking for the glory or the praise. My job is to get the word out to you subscribers, to you the listener. Amen. If you come across this channel and it's been a blessing to you, please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Also hit the bell. That way, when I make a video, you will be notified. Amen. Amen. I want to I wanna bless you this morning with another good word from the word of God. Hallelujah. Um, you've seen the title of this, this video. And I would like to share with everyone about a betrayer. The Bible says that Judas betrayed Jesus. But we still have a lot of Judas, a lot of Judas today. Yes, we do. We have a lot of betrayers still going on in the earth. But the betrayers that I'm talking about are the ones that are still trying to kill Jesus. Yes, they're still trying to kill him. They're still trying to kill his words. They're still trying to prevent you and I from being saved and filled with his Holy Spirit. I want to share with you out of the New Living Translation so you can see how this thing is still going on in 2022. But I have a message for those who this is working through to kill the Son of God, to kill the message, to stop the message of God's word from reaching out to you and from going forth. Yes, I want to share this with my subscribers today. Pay attention. Here we go. New Living Translation. Come with me to Matthew chapter 26. Watch this. This is about the plot to kill Jesus. Now, this plot to kill Jesus was not created by Jezebel's priests and prophets. These men that were plotting to kill Jesus were the same men that believe that Abraham is the father of faith. These men, these teachers, these scholars, these Pharisees, these Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, these are the names of the religious groups, Hallelujah. These were men who carried around the law of Moses, the books of Moses, Exodus, Genesis, Deuteronomy, Leviticus. Do you hear me? They read these things. Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. They got all this. And they're studying this and they're reading this, but yet they want to make sure salvation never reaches us. They want to make sure that God's saving grace never reaches you and I. And we're going to talk about there's people in 2022 that want to make sure that God's saving grace never reaches you. Amen. Come with me to Matthew chapter 26, starting at the first verse, the plot to kill Jesus. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, he said to his disciples, as you know, talking to the 12, as you know, Passover begins in two days, and the Son of Man will be handed over 
to be crucified. At the same time, the leading priests and elders were meeting at the residence of Caiaphas, the high priest, plotting how to capture Jesus, how to capture Yeshua secretly and kill him. Do you know if they had a succeeded, if they had a killed Jesus before he was crucified, we wouldn't have received his saving grace. We would not have been saved by the blood of Jesus if they had killed him before he was crucified and trial and tried and found guilty and stretched out on a cross on Skull Mountain, which is called Golgotha. If they had a succeeded and secretly kidnapped and murdered him, there would not have been any saving grace. We would have still been bound to the devil and headed straight to hell to the lake of fire if they had succeeded. Watch this. Hmm. At the same time, the leading priests and elders were meeting at the residence of Caiaphas, the high priest, plotting how to capture Jesus secretly and kill him, but not during the Passover celebration. They agreed, or the people may riot. Meanwhile, Yeshua, Jesus, was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. He previously had leprosy. And Yeshua, Jesus, is at his house. This man was healed by Yeshua. This man had leprosy. And Jesus healed him of leprosy. Now Jesus is at his house. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume and poured it over Yeshua's head, poured it over Jesus' head while he was eating. He didn't go off. He didn't say, what's wrong with you? you don't you see I'm eating? Why are you pouring this on my head? He didn't say that. Whew, watch this. The disciples were indignant when they saw this. What a waste, they said. It could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. Now this is this lady's, this woman's perfume oils that she has in a beautiful alabaster jar. But the disciples of Christ are looking at this. They got very angry. Very angry and disrespectful and out of their mind. And they said, what a waste. What a waste. That could have been sold and given to the poor. Mind you, Yeshua, Jesus just told them. As you know, Passover begins in two days and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. 
they don't seem to be concerned about that. They didn't get indignant about that. They didn't get angry about that. They got angry about this woman coming in with a beautiful alabaster box filled with perfumed oils and she poured it over Jesus' head. Now they want to get indignant and start talking a bunch of mess. Are you listening? Who? But Jesus, aware of this, why criticize this woman for doing such a good thing to me? They knew what this woman was doing was a good thing. But they all are concerned about the poor. They're not really concerned about the poor. But they say this to Yeshua. They say this to Jesus. And Jesus tells them, hey, listen, you will always have the poor among you. Since you're so concerned about them, you will always have them among you. If you really want to give this oil to the poor, if you really want to sell this oil and take the money and give it to the poor, like you said, you're going to always have the poor with you. But you will not always have me. She has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. I just told you the Passover is in two days in which I will be handed over to be crucified. You're not thinking about putting this oil on me and preparing my body for a burial, are you? But she is. She's doing a good thing. Mm. Watch this. I tell you the truth. This woman's doing a good thing preparing our heavenly Savior's body for burial. I tell you the truth. Wherever the good news is preached, wherever the good news is preached, throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. But I've noticed that with all these pastors and preachers and churches on every corner in the South, no, everywhere in the United States, I haven't heard about this woman's good deed. I don't even think it's remembered like Yeshua, like Jesus wanted this to be remembered. But today, the true worshiper, today, subscribers, today, listeners, let's remember what this woman did. Because a lot of us are in this woman's shoes. A lot of us are in this woman's shoes. And you're not getting the respect that you should. You're not even being acknowledged like you should for doing such a good thing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Yeshua, you are doing such a good thing. This woman, what she did needs to be discussed. Some of us don't even know where to start or how to discuss this, but Jesus said that it will be remembered and it will be discussed. The poor 
you will always have with you. He says, but you won't have me. You will not have me. So why criticize this woman for doing such a good deed? Mm, mm, mm. She did this for Jesus. Now, after all of this, let's go to verse 14. Then, after all of this, then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, went to the leading priest and asked, How much will you pay me to betray Jesus to you? See, that word betray in the Bible, it meant to hand over. Mm -hmm. It meant to hand over or to deliver up. Since he couldn't get the money for the alabaster box and the oil, he goes to the chief priests because he knows how the chief priest feels about Jesus. He knows the plot, the plan to kill Jesus. Everybody knows about the plan and the plot to kill Jesus. Even the disciples know about the plan and the plot to kill salvation. Hmm. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, went to the leading priest and asked, How much will you pay me to portray Jesus to you, to hand Jesus over to you, to deliver him up to you? How much will you pay me? And they gave him thirty pieces of silver. From that time on, Judas began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus. They gave him 30 pieces of silver. Oh my God. Oh my God. Let's keep going. On the first day of the festival of the unleavened bread, that is the Passover, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to prepare the Passover meal for you? Oh, man, you know, when, when, when I read this, all of his disciples are in the same boat with Judas right now. They're, they're all, they all have fallen short. Okay, they're all in the same boat. They got indignant. They, they're all fake talking about we could have used that money for the poor. Jesus told them that he's going to be crucified. They're not even concerned about his burial. They're talking about something that doesn't even belong to them. An alabaster box, an alabaster jar filled with perfume oil. It is not theirs to claim. It is not theirs to say what needs to be done with it. It belongs to the woman that poured the oil over Jesus' head. And then they asked him, where do you want us to prepare the Passover meal for you. I'm talking about an inside job here. Let's keep going. Yeshua tells them, Jesus tells them, as you go into the city, he told them, you will see a certain man tell him, the teacher says, my time has come. And I will eat the Passover meal with my disciples at your house. Now the disciples know that Yeshua's time has come. I mean, he, he keeps telling them, I'm going to be handed over to be crucified. 
they are just moving like they're not concerned. Nobody seems to be acknowledging what Christ is talking about. And then once he tells them, Judas, Judas, he goes and seek out the murderers that want to kill Jesus and ask him, how much would you pay me if I turn him over to you to kill him? And he gets his answer, 30 pieces of silver. And Jesus, they then they, the disciples come and ask, what do you want us to prepare the Passover meal for you? Why not for us? But for you. And Jesus tells them. There'll be a certain man. Tell him the teacher. Says. My time has come. I will eat the Passover meal. With my disciples. At your house. So the disciples did as Yeshua. The disciples did as Jesus told them. And prepared the Passover meal there. When it was evening, Jesus sat down at the table with the 12. With the 12, not the 11. With the 12. All of them are there. Mm -hmm. While they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth. One of you will betray me. Greatly distressed, each one asked in turn, am I the one, Lord? They all asked him, am I the one? I'm not just looking at Judas. I'm looking at the rest of them. Because I'm kind of I'm kind of like done with the disciples right now in this verse. Because they're, they're, they don't seem to be concerned about Christ and what he is about to do for them. Yes. Then he says, one of you will betray me. One of you going to hand me over. One of you are going to deliver me into the hands of the enemy. And they each ask, is it I? Man, Jesus was so, oh God, he was a good man. Can you, can you picture the Godfather sitting there knowing this? Remember that show with the gangsters, the Italians, the Godfather? One of you going to betray me? If that was Al Capone, he would have got up with his baseball bat. And began beating everybody in their head. Till he found the one that was going to betray him. That's how the gangsters would have done it. But ah, look at Yeshua. Look at our Savior. Look at the Lamb of God. He has to sit there. Among men who he believed were friends that cared about him. And he sees that only one person cares about him the most. And that was the woman with the alabaster jar full of perfume. She knew. She understood that he was going to be crucified. So she was preparing his body for burial. But the ones close to him didn't have a clue. And if they did, they didn't care. I'm going to say that. Let's keep going. Greatly distressed, each one asks in turn, am I the one Lord? He replied, one of you has just eaten from this bowl with me, will betray me. For the Son of Man must die as the scriptures declared long ago. But how terrible it would be for the one who betrays him. In other Bibles it says, woe. Woe to the one that betrays him. But how terrible it would be for the one who betrays him. It would be far better for that man if he had never been born. 
Judas, the one who would betray him, also asked, Rabbi, am I the one? Mm, mm, mm. And you know what Jesus told him? You have said it. Am I the one? You have said it. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, take this and eat it for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, each of you drink from it for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. My God, my God. Did you guys see that? Did you, did you hear that? Let's keep going. Come with me to Luke chapter 22. Watch this. The festival of unleavened bread, which is also called Passover, was approaching. The leading priests and teachers of religious law were plotting how to kill Jesus, but they were afraid of the people's reaction. Then Satan, verse 3, then Satan entered into Judas Iscariot, who was one of the 12 disciples. And he went to the leading priests and captains of the temple guard to discuss the best way to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted and they promised to give him money. So he agreed and began looking for an opportunity to portray Jesus so they could arrest him when the crowds were not around. Mm -hmm. It says, then Satan entered Judas. Then Satan entered Judas. And when Satan entered Judas, Judas went to the murderers. They were plotting to kill Jesus. I don't want to call them religious leaders because they wasn't they wasn't leaders of leaders of my faith, even though they were false Christians. They were fake Christians carrying around a book with the Mosaic law in it. Talking about that they are children of Abraham. No, you weren't. Because if they were children of Abraham, they would have known who Jesus was, who Yeshua was. And they would not have plotted to kill him. These are devils. That's who they are. It's an inside job. It wasn't the Romans. Mm -mm. It wasn't the Romans. It wasn't the Assyrians. It wasn't the Babylonians. It wasn't the Canaanites and the Amorites that did this. This was an inside job. You got to watch it. Believers out there, you got to watch those who are inside your circle, who are in close to you, calling themselves relatives and family and best friends. You better watch. Watch and pray. Amen. Whoo. Okay. I'm getting caught up here. Let me let me get this thing right here. Come with me to John chapter 6. Won't be before you long. John chapter 6. Let's go to verse 64. Verse 64. Where we at?
verse 64. But some of you do not believe me. For Jesus knew from the beginning which ones didn't believe, and he knew who would betray him. Then he said, that is why I said that people can't come to me unless the Father gives them to me. At this point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. Then Jesus turned to the twelve and asked, Are you also going to leave? Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life. We believe and we know you are the Holy One of God. Now listen to this confession. They know that Yeshua, they know that Jesus, the Holy One of God, and Jesus is telling them that the Passover was within two days and I'm going to be crucified. The Son of Man is going to be crucified. But yet, they, they just act so unconcerned. And then they say that we know that you are mm, the Son of God. Then they say that. Where are we going to go? You are the Holy One of God. Verse 70. Then Jesus said, I chose the 12 of you. Jesus said, if they say all of that, Jesus says, I chose the 12 of you, 12 of you, but one is a devil. He was speaking of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. One of the twelve who would later betray him. I chose twelve of you, yet one of you is a devil. Yet one of you is a devil. The inside job. The inside job. The one close to him. Come with me to um, John chapter 13. Let's look at verse. Look at verse 2. Uh, let's we'll start at the first verse. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth. And now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper. And the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Mm. Did you hear that? Jesus knew his hour had came. And it was time to eat. And the devil had already prompted Judas to betray Jesus. Let's go to John chapter 17. Starting at the 12th verse. Look at this with me. 12th verse. What does it say? I'm going to start at the ninth verse. My prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. All who are mine belong to you, and you have given them to me, so they bring me glory. Now I am departing from this world. They are staying in the world, but I am coming to you, Holy Father. You have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are. During my time here, I protected them by the power of the name you gave me. I guarded them so that not one was lost except the one headed for destruction as the scriptures foretold. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeshua loved the disciples. And he's asking God. He's asking the Father, protect them. Protect you and I. Protect you and I. And be with them as you and I are together. Let them be with you as you and I are together. Except the one. Except the one. That was already foretold. The son of destruction. Jesus was able to protect everyone and not lose nobody except the one. That was just bent on betraying Jesus. There is no salvation for those that are just bent on betraying Jesus. The word of God. How do you do that? You disobey it. You don't believe it. And you don't want nothing to do with it. And you're going to make sure that others have nothing to do with that word as well. You are a betrayer of the word of God. You are even probably worse than Judas. Come with me to John chapter 12, verses 4 through 6. I want to show you something here. Why I say what I say. Watch this. We're going to start at verse 1. Chapter 12. Six days before the Passover celebration. Six days before the... The Passover celebration began. Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he had raised from the dead. Now, before he was at the man's house that he healed of leprosy. And we heard what went on in that house. Lady with the alabaster jar of perfume or she anoints Jesus. She gets his body prepared for burial. The disciples are indignant saying we could have used that and, and, and sold it and got the money and, and gave it to the poor. But a waste. They said it's they said what was being done was a waste on the Savior. Oh my and he still loved them and protected them. After they said that. Oh my God. Six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he had raised from the dead. A dinner was prepared in Yeshua's honor. A dinner was prepared in Jesus' honor. Martha served, and Lazarus was among those who ate with him. Then Mary took a 12-ounce jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard, and she anointed Jesus' feet with it, and wiping his feet with her hair, the house was filled with fragrance. But Judas Iscariot, oh my God, the disciple who would soon betray him said, that perfume was worth a year's wages. You dis this man just disgusts me. Have you have you have you heard of people? Do you have people like this in your friend circle, in your family circle? They see something nice being done and, and they they can't celebrate with you. They gotta say something so that perfume was worth the year's wages. It should have been sold and the money given to the poor. Here come this lie again. Here come this lie. People just be saying stuff, but they don't really mean. His heart is not to give that to the poor. This same man right here just went to the murderers that are plotting to kill Jesus and asked them how much you'll pay me to turn him over to you so you can kill him. Not that he cared for the poor. He was a thief. 
and since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often stole some for himself. You hear this? Jesus replied, leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. Once again, disciples keep missing it. You will always have the poor among you, but you would not always have me. When all the people heard of Jesus' arrival, they flocked to see him and also to see Lazarus, the man Jesus had raised from the dead. Then the leading priest decided to kill Lazarus too. They just didn't want to kill Jesus. They wanted to kill Lazarus too. The same Lazarus that died because of some sickness, Jesus raised him from the dead. And when they hear and see all the people flocking to Jesus, they don't just want to kill Jesus. They want to kill Lazarus too. You want to kill the miracle. You want to kill the blessing. For it was because of him that many of the people had deserted them and believed in Yeshua and believed in Jesus. It was cause of that miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead that the people left the fake false prophets, false teachers, fake Christians. Mm -hmm. They got pissed off. So now they want to kill Lazarus. Now they want to kill Jesus. They done everything. They slandered Yeshua's name. Said that his power comes from Satan. Spread all kinds of rumors. There are even rumors that Jesus and Mary Magdalene had sex and had a baby. Yes. In our time, in 2022. Yes. The Savior who knew no sin. Now they got him out there bad like that. I'm talking about betrayers. That are still going on in 2022. You still got people like this. You're being blessed. You who are being blessed, you got people out there slandering your name, trying to take away that blessing that God gave you. But woe to that person. God has already said it would be better that they were never born. What's going to happen to them? Oh, my God. Come with me. Let's go to John 13 and 8. 18. Yeah, come to John 13 and 8. What does it say? Have I already read that? Nope. Let's go to John chapter 13, starting at the 18th verse. I am not saying these things to all of you. I know the ones I have chosen. But this fulfills the scripture that says, the one who eats my food has turned against me. I tell you this beforehand so that when it happens, you will believe that I am the Messiah. I tell you the truth. Anyone who welcomes my messenger is welcoming me. And anyone who welcomes me is welcoming the Father who sent me. Now Jesus, Yeshua, was deeply troubled. And he exclaimed, I tell you the truth. One of you will betray me. Then the disciples looked at each other wondering whom he could mean. The disciples, the one who Jesus loved, who Yeshua loved, leaned on him, laid his head on his shoulder, and all the disciples was wondering, who is he talking about? 
they really don't know who he's talking about. So that disciple leaned over to Yeshua, to Jesus, and asked, Lord, who is it? Jesus responded, it is the one to whom I give the bread. I dip in the bowl. And when he had dipped it, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. When Judas had eaten the bread, Satan entered him. Then Jesus told him, hurry and do what you are going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant. Since Judas was the treasurer, some thought Judas was, Jesus was telling him to go and pay for the food or to give some money to the poor. So Judas left at once, going out into the night. He told him. He said, the one I'm giving this bread to, that I'm going to dip into this cup, into this bowl. And he gave it to Judas and Judas ate it. He brought damnation on himself. When we're doing the Lord's Supper, it tells you, don't do this if you're not right with God. Because if you do, if you do take this bread and eat it and drink from this cup, you will bring damnation on yourself. And Judas did that. He did not care. He was bent on doing evil. Because see, see, why he was like that way, because Satan entered him. Satan entered him. Satan entered him. I'm going to stop right there. I just wanted to talk about the betrayers of the word of God. The Bible says the word was God. The word is God. Amen. And we have people, we have Judas walking around here today in 2022. He's in these buildings called churches. That you go to every Sunday. Not all of them are like that. But that woman that poured the oil over his head and the woman that poured the oil over his feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And both times Jesus says, leave these women alone. Quit criticizing this one and leave her alone. She's getting my body ready for burial. You ever wonder how come the disciples didn't encourage that? Why the disciples didn't encourage that? Why did they miss it? Who knows? God gave them mercy. He didn't hold it against them. He chastised them for it. He didn't hold it against them. So a lot of things we say and do may just deserve some chastisement. Maybe it doesn't deserve being locked out of heaven. And that's good. And I hope that the chastisement that is coming through the true worshiper does the same thing, that you don't take it to heart. I can't, I don't have the power to cast nobody into hell. But I love lifting up the name of Yeshua. I love lifting up the name of Jesus. I love this word. I respect and I honor this word. Well, that's all I have for you. I I just really, I really couldn't, I had to decrease on this one. It wasn't me. Each time I bring this word, I have to decrease. 
and I let the Lord increase. And I hope that you wrote down these, these, these scriptures and verses because they are a blessing. But listen, let's not forget that woman. Let's remember that what that woman did. Let's remember what the women did for Christ. And let's discuss it. Let's discuss it. Even though she was not a disciple, even though she was not the, the 12 that was chosen, you may not be the 12 that were chosen. I may not be the 12 that were chosen, but you and I are doing something that will be remembered and that will be discussed. Amen. Each time you worship him and praise him, it is like pouring that perfumed oil over his head and over his feet and wiping it with your hair. Each time. You stand up. Women of God, I know they're going around saying women are not preachers. God didn't call you to preach. Let me tell you something. You're doing something greater than preaching. What that woman did was something greater than what the disciples could ever do. Because he said, even throughout the world where the good news is preached, what will be remembered, it's not that good news that was preached, but what that woman did, it would be remembered and discussed. So women of God, women, don't let the men tell you that you're not worthy because that's an inside job. That was an inside job to portray Jesus and it was an inside job to discount women like they have nothing to offer to the word of God and to the saving grace and salvation of God's people. I tell you, keep, keep pouring the oil on, on Yeshua's head. Keep pouring it on his feet. Keep doing that and keep standing up and you keep preaching his word. You don't have to call yourself a pastor or a preacher. You keep testifying about his goodness. That's what preaching is. It's testifying about the goodness of God, about the coming, his second coming. Keep doing that, women. Don't stop. Don't you stop following Christ because some man is saying that I forbid you to preach. That was the apostle Paul. For whatever reason, don't you listen to it. You keep preaching. You keep testifying. You keep obeying God because we got a lot of men that don't have any backbone. So a lot of Ahabs running around here with a whole bunch of wives named Jezebel. But you women, you don't have the Jezebel spirit. You let the spirit of Christ dwell in you. And I'm telling you, it'll be fire shut up in your bones. You won't be able to keep your mouth closed. You're going to have to go out and tell somebody what God has done for you. You ain't got to call yourself a pastor. You don't have to call yourself a preacher. You can call yourself a true worshiper. Call yourself a woman of God. You ain't got to call yourself a prophetess. But whatever the Holy Spirit puts in you to call, whatever the Holy Spirit calls you, let others praise you with their lips. Amen. Hey, this is the true worshiper. I'll see you soon.